Bam, bam, bam. Exclamation mark secret. It works now. Hmm. I wonder how the most... I don't know if it was the EcoBoost version and not Zetat Nia, but I thought it was super fun. My entire life I have dreamed of like driving either a Camaro or a Mustang or something like that. And it was so fun to have it for a day and a half, basically. Or well, Vicky rented it on Tuesday, but on Tuesday I was busy. <coughs> at the secret event. So on Wednesday morning we drove to Disneyland. And unfortunately we chose one of the very few days of the year where it rained cats and dogs over in Southern California. Anybody that lives in SoCo will probably remember Wednesday. Crazy amount of rain. Very sad. Absolutely soaked in Disneyland. So, uh, But it was fun. And then at night we drove from... Uh, where is Disneyland? Anaheim, right? Anaheim to Vegas, which was around like 4 hours and 20 minutes. Uh, I thought it was really fun. And then on Thursday we drove around a tiny bit, went to Red Rock. And then we had to bring back the car. That was all to it. Alright, semi-finals guys of this edition of the European Pro Tour Weekly. A bit of a classic. Lately it's gone not so well for this man. Let's see if tonight will be different. Round 1. Fight! The bottom right side, we are looking at the main base of the Prince of Denmark, representing Cystorm Gaming. Is tonight his night? Last week he won the European Pro Tour Weekly and the American Pro Tour Weekly. You take away a couple of the likely candidates to win, and then this guy pretty much always wins because he's just that damn good. It's Max Pax. <laughs> Top left side of Hartlet, we are looking at the main base of the man who was in Dubai for a day or five i think like four or five day trip whatever it was seemed like he had a very good time i enjoyed watching his instagram stories representing basilisk this is rainer while i was on my uh, tiny tiny four day holiday i got more dms from different starcraft teams asking me about players that are available who they should talk to who they can hire it is crazy to believe, but the year 2024 is actually a good year to be a good StarCraft 2 player. I think the team support is really picking up, and this obviously has everything to do with the Esports World Cup and that club reward system they run. If you guys have no idea what any of those words mean, TLDR, Esports World Cup, is where the World Championships of StarCraft 2 will be held. But it's not just the StarCraft 2, and they run like 20 games over the entire summer in Saudi Arabia. And... If you're an esports orc and you have players or teams active across multiple games, you qualify for this thing called Club Rewards, which is a leaderboard, and you can literally win over a million dollars as an esports orc. Even if you take like fifth place, you're going to win a couple hundred thousand dollars. So it is really worth for almost any esports orc that has good players or good teams in either Dota, Counter Strike, PUBG, but Street Fighter, Tekken, whatever games they run, to also have a StarCraft 2 presence and hope that. Their player makes a couple points. And that is why your man Roddy has been getting a lot of DMs. And I think it's very exciting. It makes me really happy because it's been tough for some of the StarCraft 2 Pro gamers. If you're not a content creator, if you're not a streamer, and you just rely on either a bit of salary and prize money, the salaries went down quite a bit for not necessarily the top tier guys. Like, they're still well taken care of. But if you're like a top 15, top 20 guy... It was pretty hard to find good team support for a while. That is absolutely not the case, I think, in 2024. No, we uh, we really behaved, Meta Chobo. No crazy driving, obviously, but it was nice to feel some of that American muscle power on the highway. Very fun experience. Something I've always wanted to do, and I'm happy I got to do it. And if one day we are absolutely cooking, either in this game or in a different game, we'll see if we can save up. Max Max is playing aggressive here in the beginning. Those adepts went in deep. They got a drone. The Oracle shows up, gets a drone as well. Three in total so far. Three is an alrighty start, as long as your key units are alive. Don't think Rainer is mega upset, but it is very important for Rainer not to lose three more in the next minute. Mm. Mm. Roddy is Max Fence agent, them. I just call greatness when I see it, and I think Max Pax is great. I mean, I love both of these guys, obviously. Raynor is one of my absolute best friends, not just within StarCraft, but out of StarCraft as well. Max Pax is one of my favorite Protoss players. Probably my favorite Protoss player, actually by quite a large mouth. So to me, it's always just a treat to watch these guys battle and... Made a better man win, right? This is not exactly a life-changing tournament. It's just here, entertainment, fun StarCraft. Competitive StarCraft on the Monday night. 
And I just hope that you guys are entertained and we have some good series. Mm. <laughs> no, there were no burnouts. We behaved. There was one moment actually while we were driving at the back end of the Vegas Strip. And we were on our way to that dinner with Todd. <laughs> and it was that the day it was sunny, so we put the roof down, it was convertible, we were sitting there. And I had to wait for two guys to pass. It was one of these moments where they could have passed, I could have passed, but I just like, I was like, ah, oh, you guys can go. And the dudes looked at me and they're like, do a burnout! <laughs> and they're shouting at me and I was like, no. I was just laughing. I was like, no, no, no. Not gonna do that with a rental car. I have seen too many videos of that going wrong. And I like to think that I'm a decent driver, but when I talk about being a decent driver, I mean act normal on the highway and pay attention to what's happening around me. I am not a stunt driver, so not taking any risk. Adepts and oracles battling links and queens on the edge of creep. It's a lot of adepts dying. This adept shade is going to finish up, so the Max Max gets one, gets a second drone. And that is it for now. Slowly, thank you for the 47 months. Tezata, thank you for the 27 months. Feels good to be back, guys. Can Reina get an oracle here? So close, 3 HP or something? 4. 4 HP. Whoa. I just hit my glass for absolutely no reason. Bogo Lisk with the 22 months. So much love. <laughs> Todd did invite me. He's like, hey, come in. You should just stay in Vegas for like a month. It's going to be so fun. You can stream from Vegas. It's okay, man. We just rent a place together. You bring a laptop, you get a headset microphone, and you're good to go. Play a stream a couple hours of StarCraft and then uh, come with me and play poker for 8 hours a day. I was like, I don't know Todd. I don't know if Basilisk is very fond of the idea of me being in Vegas for a month. And not really being connected. It's a bit much. Who am I rooting for? I'm gonna give you the lamest answer possible. I am rooting for good games. As I said, this is not a very big event. If this is something like Game is 8, then I'll be honest, I am rooting for Rainer. A, because he's my teammate, and B, because he's a very close friend. But here on the weekly, Rainer is also playing this for fun, for practice. Made a better player win, mate. I just hope that you guys have a fun series with me. Don't always need to have a horse in every race. Falcons is very interested. I mean, the max pack situation is very interesting because max packs could get such a crazy salary of some of these teams because he's obviously guaranteed pretty much for the esports world cup. And if he would decide to go, he could get such a crazy good deal for like one year or two years. And yeah, it was, and, and then obviously the crazy prize money that you are competing for as well in the esports world cup. And I think max packs is omega good. And at that point, the patch is going to be even better for Protoss. Trainer is going to play some uh, Ling Roach Mudalis, but Max Pex is super in his face, and I don't think Rainer can really save this hatchery. So if Max Pex would get over, whatever the hell is stopping him from attending uh, offline events, he could get, I would almost say, like a semi-life-changing deal. Mm -hmm. Up to the point where he does not have to stay up every single Monday at 6 a.m. to win 200 bucks. He could get a very good salary. Obviously that's up to him and I don't know a whole lot more than you guys do. All I hope is that we get to see him in action one day. Because he is very good. As you guys can see, he's microing his sock as close to perfection. Taking out the center base. Rainer is on the other side of the map with a few Mudas. It's not a crazy amount of Mudas, but I think it's enough to really start putting a number on this economy. Max Max is a quick player though. He's already warped in some stalkers defensively. No, 74 workers against 73. Lartek against uh, Protoss on double forts. All these gates. Three more gateways coming online. I think nine minutes in, you guys would agree with me that this looks pretty good for Max Pax, Even if he's down a bit in supply. I don't think that matters too much against Lartek Zerk. But he has not won this game yet. He, it is far from over. Rainer is obviously incredibly good in the multitasking department as well. That's a big stasis though. A couple of Karosa Bells do not connect. The uh, Lings are going to help out the middle at the bottom side of the map, but Max Pex has warped in a couple of Zealots to help out his Stalkers. Great battles between these two. Mm -hmm. mm. Was your trip a private vacation or SC2 related? The trip was only because of the business opportunity that I had. Exclamation mark secret. I cannot tell you what it was related to. Mm. Vegas was purely for fun. 
That's just because I did not want to fly all the way to the other side of the world for two days and then go home again. I was like, if I go through the pain of sitting in economy class for 11 hours, I want to have a bit of fun out of it too. We're not going to do that twice in three days. So, it was only for work, otherwise I would have never made the trip. Because now obviously it was covered as well and I got some accommodation and got a small, well, decent treat <laughs> to go there. The four extra days were for fun. War Prism gets picked up by the Ravagers. That is a big pickup for Rainer. That's going to make his life a little bit easier as he's doing a very good job with all of these Lair Tech units. The biggest problem for Rainer here, guys, is that he's kind of stuck on Lair Tech. You guys see there is no Evastation Pit yet. Most of the Mutas have been taken care of. And how do you attack as Lair Tech Zerg into cannons, into batteries, into 12 gateways? Double Forge. I, I just don't see Rainer getting great fights off creep. On creep, he's okay. I, I don't think he's like in danger of dying in the near future. Because these Zerg units battle pretty well. You know, these upgrades are a problem, though. I think Raynor is in trouble unless he can find a victory in the next minute. And this is the moment where he's going to try to get that victory. With a bunch of Banelings coming in as well. The Banelings are going to blow up a lot of the Stalkers, perhaps. Golza Beam has been activated. There are two, three fights happening right now. You guys can see on the minimap as well. Max Bex has split off a couple of units. Raynor has been trying to kill these Oracles forever with the Ravages. But Max Bex is too quick. These Stalkers are in a very uncomfortable spot, though. I don't really like where these Stalkers are. Because now Reyna's reinforcements are going to get on top of these units immediately. And you can really see that Max Bex is paying a hefty price for it. He's got a lot of Stalkers in a safer spot as well. If you're here, you can always blink back to your cannon, blink back to your battery. Couple of Banelings will roll in. Big connections on these veins, guys. Minus 10 throws. That is good. Max Bex's War Prism is very active on the left side, though. This is exactly what I hoped for. It's not about Reyna winning, it's not about Max Pets winning, it's about watching two of the best Star of 2 players on the planet having a good time. And giving you guys some chaos. So quick, both of them. I think the upgrades make the difference here. I think Max Pets' upgrades are simply a little too good, and I think Reyna cannot quite find the trades, cannot quite, quite find the damage that he was looking for. He's gonna queue up seven more Mutas, and it will allow him to take care of this War Prism. But he has lost that center base for the second time in this game. And the upgrade situation is not getting any better. It is only getting worse. Max Pax is with Zealots in the main, Zealots in the third, a bunch of Stalkers and Oracles in the center of the map. He has some money in the bank. He's probably counting down the seconds until plus three is gonna kick in and that's really gonna make these Stalkers hit like a Ford Mustang. No more Volvo trucks, guys. American muscle in these Stalkers. Always Mr. OGS Luxon. Never had a business trip in my life. One time I got it for Amsterdam to Kiev, but that was such a tiny plane that the business wasn't really business, you know? It's like, okay, you're in front of the curtain and you get a glass of orange juice before you take off. On any of my big flights, I have never, ever, ever flown business. One day we'll get there, but not quite there yet. Twenty-seven stalkers on the side of Max Bex. That plus three attack has kicked in. It's gonna make it so omega difficult for roaches and ravages with only plus one missile attacks and no carapace upgrades. Like this is not a fair fight. We are used to seeing these fights and be like, oh yeah, the ravages are kind of good, right? Sometimes they are kind of good. And it really comes down to upgrades, and it's a bit of a numbers game. Max Bex has done enough things right in this game. You guys can see that Rainer has lost close to five thousand resources more as well. The Prince of Denmark has played a very active style of Protoss. Has not gone for any splash damage. Oh. Zero splash damage, actually, but you don't need splash damage if you're all over your opponent, if you warp in the right units, if your macro is on point. Man, that is good enough. Sometimes it's a lot more about maintaining that momentum. Of course, Colossus are great, and Archons are good in some scenarios. A storm can be fantastic against Zerg. But if you're playing the style that Max Pex is playing, you don't want to go for these awesome units that are a bit slow. Because the moment they're slow, you're giving up the tempo advantage that you have. And then you're giving Rain a time to drop an infestation pit to transition into high tech units. And maybe sneak out a lurker then. Or maybe be in trouble against an overwhelming amount of Banelings if you're caught in that awkward moment where it's like, okay, you have one storm, two storm, that's not quite good enough. 
For Max Pax, it was all about keeping the momentum on his side, finding damage, denying bases, denying creep, and expanding non-stop. And he did a great job in that regard. Mm. Uh, I am unfortunately not allowed to tell you what soon means. I don't even know if I'm allowed to tell you guys that it will be soon, but... I've done that, and I think they will forgive me for that, but I cannot tell you what soon means. What soon is, is soon. <laughs> Volvo is Swedish, though. And yes, it is. Volvo is pretty awesome. I saw a decent amount of Volvos in America, actually, on the road. Surprised that it's doing well there. They have so many great options. I feel like I saw almost more Volvos than I saw German cars. Round two, fight! Business is fun, but it's a massive waste of money. Yeah, but I almost never pay for my own flights. Because I basically only travel for work. I have traveled so much for work that traveling is really not that fun for me. What is fun for me is just being home, streaming some StarCraft, playing some Padel in the neighborhood, and hanging out with friends. Standing in lines at the airports and locking myself up in airplanes for 12 hours straight. It's after you've done that for like over a decade and... 20 international trips or 30 40 whatever I say international I meant intercontinental at one point that just uh, kind of bums you out a little maybe one day if we're absolutely uh, balling then we'll sneak in a business class flight or a first class flight if I ever book my own holiday but it makes sense for me to combine work with holidays if I'm already there if that part is covered then you just spend a little bit of your, ex of your own money for the extra days and then you go home. Bottom right side, guys. Down 0-1. Played a good game, but just couldn't quite find the damage I think he was looking for with the links, with the roaches, and definitely not with the Muras. This is Basilisk Raynor. Just came back as well from a five or six day trip to Dubai. So maybe a tiny bit out of it. I don't know how many games he has played since he came home. Top left side of Oceanborn. We are looking at the main base of our Protoss. Trying to get a date with his favorite French Terran in the Grand Finals of the European Pro Tour Weekly. Do you guys think he missed him last week? Or do you guys think he didn't miss him at all because that made it a bit easier to win the weekly? Sidestorm Gaming's Max Packs. <laughs> Next month? Could be. Could even be sooner, right? Can also be later. I already said this before and I don't mind repeating that. Not everyone that was there is as excited as me. And that's okay. Different strokes for different folks. To each their own. I think it's awesome. Do I think all of you guys will think it's awesome? No. Some of you guys will probably be like, what the fuck, Ruddy? You got me excited for this. And I think some of you guys will be like, holy fuck, this is awesome. I am in the holy fuck, this is awesome category. At least for now, you never know. Like I only... I mean, I have two days of experience, right? Which is not the same as many months and crazy months of hours. But I had a very good time and I'm excited for all of it. And I know for... A f I'm 100% certain at least some of you guys will be as excited as me. And then some of you guys will be like, no, this is not it. This is not for me. And that's okay. Hmm. I actually met uh, Kat, uh, Rakitis. Because Todd is good friends with Catrific as well. And she came to hang out with us because she lives in LA. So the lady that I made the music video with actually did come to uh, the hotel that we were all staying at for a little bit. It was fun to catch up, talk about life, and see how someone is doing. You've been in Cali? Yes. California and Nevada. I'm more of a Nevada guy than I am a California guy. But maybe that's also biased because I got to spend so much time of my life in California that at one point you know kind of been there done that got to spend a lot less time in Nevada so I find it more fun yeah. two queens and a sport crawler getting a couple of shots off on uh, the Oracle but so far I think rain off to a better start guys we've only lost one drone last game we lost three drones and it obviously felt that the door was open for more this is, I think, kind of a difficult base to have as your third, but it's not Reyna's first rodeo, so I'm sure he knows what to do. What has Max Pack said about Clem? I, uh, I don't know what he said about Clem, unless somebody did an interview with him while I was gone. 
I did talk to Clem about max packs. Um, Clem did say he's like, ah, yeah, lately he's been getting me. He's like, ah, he's good then. There's like some builds. Clem basically said that there were some builds that he used to find a lot of success with. But what he sees in max packs is what he sees in all the great stock of two players where if you get him a few times with a certain build, he's incredibly good in learning from his losses, adapting, and you can completely buff him with one build one week, but if you then try it again seven days later, he will have the right response, he will have the right answer. So then you have to switch it up, but eventually you're kind of out of options of switching it up. And then it just really comes down to execution, where there's no such thing anymore as a quick build or the win. As much as some people believe that that is the case in TVP at the moment. And Clem said that he's just very, very, very difficult to beat at the moment. Clem is very good too, so... If that is the finals tonight, I'm sure we're in for a treat. Adapts and one oracle battling the queens on the edge of creep as Max Pax has split off two oracles to the bottom right side. But Rainer's defense is truly on point, man. Six minutes in, guys, he has only lost three drones. That is so omega hard against a man like Max Pax. If you guys watch Max Pax against basically any other Zerg in Europe that is not called Serral or Rainer, six minutes in, a lot of games are just over because he is that damn good with the adapt movement, he's that damn good and effective with the oracles. Finds two more drones, but Rain is already at 70 workers at the moment. So losing three drones when you have 30 workers is a very big problem. That's a big deal. And if you then lose two more when you get it back up to 35, that slows you down for a long time. Losing two drones when you're at 70, yeah, who really cares? That's not that big of a deal. That's not going to slow the Italian Stallion down. So I think seven minutes into Oceanborn, this game looks good for Rainer, but he also knows that he's going to have to do a whole lot more to win this game. So we tried to go to the Red Canyon, Arusta, and we got very close. But it turns out that these days you need to buy an admission pass. This was not very well thought out by those guys. You can't just drive into that canyon anymore. You show up and then there are signs, ticket holders only. And you're like, oh, okay. Can we buy a ticket here? No, you have to do it online. You're like, cool. Then you go online and you realize you're in the desert and there is no cell phone reception. <laughs> and no internet. So you're like, alright, what do I do? Do I really drive all the way back? To a place where I have internet. Just kind of looked at it from afar and took some pictures and said, yeah, that's good enough for me. Huh? <laughs> Stalkers and Observer and Oracles are going to clean up a bit of creep. Rainer's creep spread is looking excellent here. 7 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. I mean, this realm, mate, I've answered you like 5 times. I've been to California and I've been to Nevada. Like <laughs> Los Angeles and then Las Vegas. I don't know how many times I have to answer it. Answered you like five times. <laughs> no, the exclamation mark secret is literally all I can say. Grumpy as usual. <laughs> that is, if there was more information, it would obviously be in that command, mate. I wouldn't write a stupid command to then tell you a whole lot more. What is written in that command is all I can say. That might even be a bit too much already, but I have decided that that is where I draw the line. I signed an NDA, I cannot say more. I don't want to be in trouble. The Big Gape Cup was something that we did right before I went to uh, America. That has nothing to do with any of that. That is my most recent VOD. Uh, Big Gabriel ran a one-day $2,500 tournament in Cologne, Germany. Lambo came out, Showtime came out, Harston was there, Skillers, Calazur, Clem. And Clem in the end ended up winning it. Yeah. Hello, Viva. Thank you for stopping by. 93 Zerglings on the map for Raynor. Max Pax does have those 1-1 one -one upgrades already, but this game is a different ball game. Raynor is a high tech Zerg. I do think that Hatchery, the bottom side of the map, is going to go down. This one has gone down as well. It's going to be the other way around. It's the top right that's falling, but Raynor has a... I want to say good answer for all these zealots, but that was a bit of an awkward fight. Raynor now gets a surround, potentially. Lings and Hydras, guys, battling Stalkers. Far off creep, but obviously it's far away from the batteries and cannons as well. I think this is maybe where Rainer needs to stop battery overcharge. This is going to be a bit too much. Rainer is aware of that. There's also no need for Rainer to take this fight here and potentially lose a lot of your links and Hydras. And you've got Seismic Spines finishing up and you've got Hive Tech. It's just a very good uh, second game here for Rainer. 
is this something where he's gonna be in trouble for now? I think there's enough firepower in the remaining Lings and Hydras to push these stalkers back once more. Max Pack's still mega active with that Prism and he's desperately trying to get this hatchery too. Now it's just a couple of Queens. Queens will buy some time for extra Lings and maybe the Zealot should have gone for the hatchery at one point, but I guess Max Pack didn't want to do that because he was afraid that the Queens were just going to heal it. So good job by Reyna keeping that very crucial fifth base alive because you don't want to be a four base Zerg 10 minutes into the game. Do you guys think that Disrael is trolling me, guys? <laughs> I feel like he's trolling, right? He's been here for two hours now. <laughs> Oracle gets picked off. The first Oracle of the three. And a lot of stalkers are low in HP. Max Pax's supply is climbing. And he did sneak out the Robo Bay. First Colossus is on the way. But it's going to be a Colossus without extended thermal lens. We have the first six Lurkers. And I hope that Max Pax is going to recall something with the detection. Yes, he's got an observer. That's not enough stalkers, though. That is nowhere near enough stalkers. So this recall did not work out. Raynor wins in the center. Raynor wins at the top. At least for a little while until Max Pax warps in 12 more zealots. But I'm going to say that these victories have been good enough for Raynor to get the job done. And make it all tied up after two. After an 11-minute action-packed game. Just a better early game for Raynor. And overall, I think a better strategy. What I do find is funny, and I would love to hear your opinion about it, for all the diehard either Zergies or Protoss players out there, or just Starker fans, is that a lot of Zergs will tell you that Lurkers are not really the way to go against Protoss. They don't trust in the Lurker, they don't always want to go for Lurkers. Well, if I think of the different styles that are viable for Zerg right now, whether it's Mudas, Mass Roach for a bit, or they go Ling, Hydra, Bane, or they go into Hive and they go for either Ultras or Brute Lords or a combination of those units, or Lurkers, I feel like by far and away, Zergs find the most success with Lurkers. If I look at all these high level games between players that are supposed to be equal to one another, that are close to being on the same level, I think of all the Zerg styles, if I was a Zerg, I would be by far and away the most fond of the Lurker style. This feels like that's where they get the most wins. That creep threat feels like wasted APM from Raynor if he plays Max Packs. I think Rainer has enough APM that we don't need to worry too much about wasted APM. But it is definitely a non-stop battle over vision, over map control, over creep spread. But you may think it's wasted APM, but obviously he still forces Max Specs to be there with his units to push it back. So then you basically force your opponent to be somewhere and that maybe opens the door for you to find either a good fight against that army or find damage where that army is not because you see where that army is because it's on the edge of creep. So. Definitely not wasted APM, mate. Cruise threat is very, very important in high level PVZ and CVP, no matter how you look at it. Maybe even the most important thing of all of it. Final round, fight! Top left side of Site Delta, winning game one, losing game two. We are looking at the main base of the man who has won this tournament more than anybody else besides Clem and Hero Marine. This is Psystorm Gaming's Max Packs. I guess an easier way to put it is to say that he has been the most successful Protoss ever in the history of this tournament. Bottom right side of Side Delta, we are looking at the main base of the Italian Stallion, back from a six-day trip in Dubai, where he hang out with former, or uh, not former, fellow Red Bull athletes. They have a lot of athletes across different sports, games, etc. Even Max Verstappen had the joy of being in the presence of this man. This is Basilisk Rainer. You had enough shite them? This is my life shite them. It's like, someone asks you a question, you respond. They ask you the same question, you respond. Somebody else that is not there early asks you the question, you respond. At one point you respond to the same question for like two and a half hours and then that OG guy is still like, where has he been? God, can someone please tell me where he's been? Meanwhile, everyone else is like, hey, Roddy, how was the Mustang? How was Disneyland? How was the secret event? How was, how was Vegas? And then the original guy is like, can someone, for the love of God, tell me where he's been? Why doesn't he tell me? I'm like, hey, guys, I had in and out in Vegas. We went to Red Rock. Where is he? <laughs> can you believe he was gone? <laughs> it's like, at one point, I just don't know what to do with it anymore. <laughs> 
Dark mainly goes Lurkus vs Protoss. But Dark is also the absolute god of Roach Hydra. And at this point, I will no longer. I have decided that we are no longer looking at Dark's build and say like, ah, this is not that good. Because if you win that freaking much with it, it is good. And Dark just, even though he does crazy stuff, he really understands the game at an incredibly high level. And you just, you gotta give him props and kudos for finding so much success with what feels like A is a very outdated style and B is a style that should really not be that good. That man can run into Robo Armies, whether it's Disruptors, Colossus, Immortals, with Roaches and Hydras, and you think that the Protoss has the perfect army to deal with it, and then Dark just finds success over and over and over again. It's uh, not still something I think you should do every game, but it's so impressive how much success Dark finds with it. I have not flushed because I, uh, I had very little data in America. I had Wi-Fi sometimes, but I really didn't have... Uh, most of the time that is like when I'm around people, so I wasn't on my phone too much. I did not see the GSO. I came back this afternoon at like 3 p.m. I showered, I slept for two hours, and I went live for the weekly. But I have not seen GSO. If you guys ask me tomorrow, I've probably gone over the VODs. But at this point, I haven't seen it yet. I did, Kaispa. Did you enjoy the UFC, Kaispa? Because I know you're a big fan. I only got to see the main event. I thought it was pretty fun. Sugar is good. He is very, very good. Ah. I get some of the points that you guys have made about the Lurkers, but I really feel that the Lurkers, at least as first option, are the best. And then after the Lurkers, you can obviously always switch it up and still try to go with something else if you feel like the Protoss is just too well set up or the carry account is getting high and you can get an answer for that but if I was anywhere near as good in playing Zerg as guys like Rain or Acero I'd be a lurker boy any day of the week and then of course you can switch it up as well by making it seem like oh it's just the same old lurkers but you actually cut drones and you spam a few more Hydras and you try to hit a bit harder with like Hydras and links initially the Lurkers just feel like the most solid of the options. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I even have a command for it. <laughs> you didn't notice I was gone? That's okay. Someone at Reddit noticed I was gone. Which I'm very happy with. I have been Reddit invisible for the last uh, 14 years of my career. No one really hates me, but I just don't care. I'm like, oh yeah, that dude, he does his thing. Not important. Oh, I was gone for eight days. They're like, you know what? Twitch does feel different if Roddy doesn't go live every single day. I'm like, ha! <laughs> I do matter. Sportcrawler getting a lot of shots off, and Max Pax loses an Oracle in a bit of an uncharacteristic way. Like, he gets two drones there. That's obviously not good enough. Maybe he didn't see it because he's in a bit of an awkward spot. I don't know what happened there, but that's not the kind of Oracle loss you see very often from Max Pax. Or maybe he just thought that he was going to kill six, seven drones and then lose an oracle, but he only gets two. And that is not a victory for the prince, and Reyna is going to be happy with that. Quicker Robo Bay this time around for Max Pax. No longer going for the double forge that we saw the first two games. He's going to switch it up. Reyna, though, also switching it up. Plus one melee, Zerglings, dropping a Roach one. They're in for a real treat. If I have the time before I go live tomorrow, I will watch it. And if I don't watch it tomorrow before I stream, I will watch it after I'm done streaming tomorrow. I'm happy that you guys are excited. I love Protoss positivity. I've been trying to spread it, but not everyone is okay with that. Nice to hear that the Protosses are finding some success, even on this current patch. It's so difficult. I saw the uh, highlight. I only saw the ending, Kaispa. I did not see the uh, full fight. Because I went to the Vegas Knights hockey game. My fourth ever NHL game. Maybe it was my favorite game. They really make it a, g a great show. It's a super fun area to be, like, right before the game. Unfortunately, we showed up a bit late because I had a monstrous headache on uh, Saturday. So I had to take some painkillers and I waited. And then suddenly it got a bit better. I was like, all right, we can go. So I wasn't really... Uh, part of like the pre-game party before the stadium but I did still see the DJ and the music and then I did see obviously the anthem and the little show that they have with that gladiator on ice I think Vegas Nights is very cool 
There were so many Detroit Red Wings fans, though. Holy smokes. I mean, I don't know if you guys care about hockey, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, some of you guys must do. Uh, I think of, it was I think pretty much sold out. Maybe it was like 85, 90% sold out. And I think at least 25% of the stadium was in red. It was a crazy amount of support for Detroit. And I, I had a grandma behind me. She was, this, this is the most fanatic grandma ever. I have no idea how old she was, but I'm going to say at least 80. And it's probably closer to 90 than 80. Like, I kid you guys not. If I say that she screamed, Go Knights, go! At the top of her lungs for like a hundred times during that game, I'm not lying. Grandma was fanatic AF. And there were a whole bunch of Detroit fans around us. And Grandma just did not stop. Go Knights, go! <laughs> and I obviously joined her. And then whenever they scored, I turned around and gave high fives to Grandma and the old man that she was with. Well, it was very cool. Very wholesome experience. And it was a great game. It wasn't boring at all. Max Pax is going for Colossus and Storm at the same time. Other than that one Oracle going down, it's kind of cool. It's been a lot of poking and prodding. Rainer dropping the double Lurker then right next to each other. Since it's next to each other, I almost feel like it's on purpose. Sometimes Zerks do feel like they can hit that very minor window where you just need speed and you need seismic spines at the same time. Mas Max Pax clearly making adjustments, realizing that maybe it is very hard to beat that Lurker style of Rainer with the way that he was playing that double Forge Gateway style. And that's why this time he's going for single Robo and High Templars. I'm tempted to say that I like double Robo more, but the biggest problem with double Robo is that you have no good answer for Vipers. And obviously if we look at High Tech Lurkers, you have to worry about Vipers too. And Storm is great against all these links, can help out against the Lurkers too. I think the biggest advantage of going for the High Templar route instead of double Robo is that you can actually feed back those Vipers if you really need it. Did Buffalo Wild Wings live up to the expectations? Always, man. I love Buffalo Wild Wings. Big Stasis Trappy. The Stalkers have already blinked though, so Reyna gets a surround, and I think he's gonna get like almost all of them. A Storm does land, but Reyna gets all those Stalkers, and then it's completely okay to lose a bunch of Zerglings. Links are cheap, Stalkers are not. The Moisture Club for Nayland. Does Fire North. Fire North. Geen club kan daar nog wat. Easy answer, mate. Senators fans here. I unfortunately never got to go to a game in Canada. Even though I did go to Canada quite a few times in my life. Maybe that's like a tiny bucket list goal. I'm just like, even if I'm not like the biggest fan of the sport, I just love going to stadiums and meeting people and experiencing the big crowd. So if I can ever go to a Maple Leafs game or uh, the Canadians or even the Canucks, I, I would love that. But I would need to get lucky that I'm somehow in town and can get tickets. <laughs> uh, even on my way to the stadium, I saw so many like Red Wings jerseys and people in all red. I was like, what the hell? Who's playing tonight? Who's at home? Is it the Red Wings or is it the Vegas Golden Knights? And obviously, whenever you like run a tournament like that, a tournament, uh, a sports franchise like that from Vegas, you're always going to have a lot of tourists, right? Like myself, that are not necessarily Vegas Golden Knight fans, but we just want the experience. So then you have a lot of tourists, and then you have a lot of away fans. It almost, to me, it felt like there was almost more support for the Red Wings than there was for the Golden Knights. The Lurk is on the high ground. That's going to be very difficult to attack into. And unfortunately for Max Pax, I don't see a shield battery here, guys. A crazy amount of cannons. There is one battery all the way in the back, but I would have loved to see a battery a bit more forward. So you can actually, like, stand here with your units. Like, if Max Pax would have a battery here or here, then you can just stand in this little area, activate battery overcharge, and then your units are going to be fine. But Max Pax has transitioned into a bunch of Tempest. Rainer is going to see these Tempests. It is double Spire on the side of Rainer. He's going to get a great spy and he's going to be able to work on upgrades. Massive bank, by the way, guys, for Reyna. I know, uh... Cure Misago. That's why I said, like, I think it's either double Robo or it's single Robo in Templar Archives. Maybe what Max Bix is doing is better. But I think if you're... If you have limited skill, like me, I think double Robo is better. <laughs> well, obviously, Max Bix does not have limited skill, so it makes sense that he goes for the more optimal thing. There are no Vipers in the mix yet. Still no Vipers. Hive Tech has been online for a little while. 
Rainer maybe didn't have that much gas, and I think he wants to make sure that he can afford the Spire upgrades, crank out a bunch of the Corruptors. Should absolutely get Vipers though. I feel like there was almost never a bad moment to go Vipers. Six more cannons, a battery double rubble. Winner of this series will advance into the grand finals of this edition of the European Pro Tour Weekly, where I assume Clem is waiting, but I don't know if Clem is done yet. Stasis Trappy gets taken out, Lurkers are burrowing. Rainer is maybe setting up a flank. He's got a lot of links, a couple of banelings in the mix as he is poking with the Corruptors. So hard to attack into Static D. Battery Overcharge has been activated. I don't like Rainer being here. This is not a fight you can take, Rainer. Not when Battery Overcharge is active. And you guys can really see it. Not a single Protoss unit, I believe, went down there. Meanwhile, Rainer lost quite a few valuable units. Now he's got a bank. So, not the end of the world, but... I think as a Zerg, you just need to accept when you're working with those numbers that the moment you see that green battery active, walk away. Like, it's just no point in sending there, no point in fighting. Couple of storms are landing. What are you drinking? I had a double coffee earlier to wake up. Because I had a little uh, nap that more felt like a, a proper sleep. But that got interrupted by my alarm for the weekly. So double coffee into now one whiskey. And the whiskey is the Woodford. Reserve bourbon. That's the one that I like. Not too expensive and it's always great. But I just had one. Maybe we'll get a second one. Yeah. Three Tempest into now five carriers. As Max Pex is poking in a couple of these lurkers with his uh, stalkers. Both players working with big banks at this point. 5,000 minerals. And Max Pex is the one who's sitting on a lot more gas. Rain is going to get eight spines. That, this is definitely the phase in the game where it's okay for your work account to go down a little. You really don't need 80 workers anymore. Right when I say that, Rainer makes 7 more, but I think he's just going to go crazy on spine crawlers, on spores. Air upgrades are plus 2 for Max Pax. As Max Pax looks at this uh, lurker number and he says, You know what? Not too scary. I think I can do it. As he's now running into even more, loses a couple of the Archons, High Templars. I think I need more to win down. As he builds the Mama Ship. You guys know that for the longest time I was not a fan of the Mama Ship. I was not a believer. One of my most iconic Starcraft 2 discussions ever happened at Homestory Cup 20 with Lambo. Where Lambo and I were both drunk in a jacuzzi in the Berlin Tropical Park and we argued over the Mama Ship for like 45 minutes. As the Corruptors show up in very high numbers and the Tempest and Carriers are not here, so an Oracle dies, a couple of the Colossus die. That was a good move by Rainer. And Max Max says, all right. Hey, this is risky though. This army cannot recall. Uh, Mother ship is not out yet, and Max Pax just recalled. I don't know if this is a great move. He needs to go back. Max Pax knows that he needs to go back as he drops this storm, and all of his attempts get surrounded. This was not the play, man. This was not the play, and the corrupt count is pretty high. It's 15. Max Pax is gonna pay a very, very hefty price for that move out. Two carriers die. Make it three as Reina gets the hat trick. He's gonna get a Tempest as well, maybe an additional carrier. This might be the moment for Rainer to slow down. Battery overcharge activated. Not good enough to save that low HP carrier. Ah, that was not it. I think Max Pax felt like he needed a victory. Uh, after he lost his Nexus here and he was going to lose his army. lost the Colossus and he recalled those units. But it was just a little bit too early to make that kind of a move out. He could make that move out once the Mothership is out. Because obviously the Mothership can recall these units away. So then he could have just ran on top of this hatchery, A move, kill it, and then recall the army back. Now he couldn't recall. Mothership not out yet. Nexus recall on cooldown. He lost so many expensive units. He's actually lost more resources now than Reyna did. Mm. This man doesn't jet lag. Well, I definitely did when I was in the US, maybe. Uh, we'll see what time I wake up tomorrow, but... Uh. I think the Atletico game is going to be more fun in a weird way. They're both fun games, Serpico. I think they are both very fun games. And I think the Dortmund PSV game is very exciting too. Some good sports to look forward to in this week. The War Prism cannot get into the main. Reyna did a good job in just leaving a single Corruptor behind. Even a single Corruptor will get a War Prism, especially if the Queens start helping out. Keeping your main base safe is so important. 
if you're starting to work with slightly slower armies like Brute Lords, Mercus, etc. Not really a uh, Captain Damage. I'm not too picky, mate. I like almost every single whiskey I ever drank besides uh, Johnny Walker Red Label. But that's just a childhood memory uh, or trauma, I should say, not a memory. When I was a little kid, I had a little too much of that. And now, even when I'm 36, if I smell that, I start gagging <laughs> almost immediately. That's the one whiskey that I absolutely despise. Everything else is okay for me. Mm -hmm. I don't think you need to time out a message like that. I know that's a bit much. Rainer has 4,600 minerals and 1,000 gas, but he has spent a lot of gas and stuff like Double Spire, Lurkus, Corruptus. He has made a crazy amount of Corruptus, so then obviously you are going to drone, uh, you're going to drain a bank rather quickly. Huh? I think uh, Rainer still has a, I want to say okay bank, but yeah, losing this base and then those 13 drones, that is a little bit problematic. A lot of production facilities as well, right? Double spy, double lurker, then an ultralist cavern, even though ultralist didn't really come into play. Rain is on 116 army supply, now 131 as he makes 46 additional links. Max packs blinks forward. It is the Stargate count is indeed a three. Triple Stargate, triple Robo. Sometimes that's honestly okay because building production facilities is expensive. I don't know about this fight for Rainer's Corruptors as he eats a big storm to the face. Archons are doing their thing. Zealot run by are relentless over here at this 3 o'clock base. Prince of Denmark looking very good here in the latest stages of Psy Delta. Is it going to be good enough to close out this game? There is a chance. For a little while, Reyna was trading really good. And after that bad fight that Max Pax took with his carriers and Tempest, he even lost more. And somehow in the last 3 minutes, Reyna has lost 10,000 resources more than Max Pax as he goes for a recall. I'm gonna keep this base safe against all these links. Rainer now queues up a couple of Ultras, but Ultras are so expensive too. Funny how the creep is like completely disconnected, but we still have creep over here. Max Pack's probably gonna clean this up. I think taking another base might be difficult for Max Pack, but does he really need to? Is he? It's obviously it's so hard for Max Pack to know what kind of a situation is in. He probably thinks that it's looking good, and he's not wrong. But will that give him the confidence to go for an Im immediate move out? As we do have our first Viper showing up and the, Vi uh, the Tempest gets abducted. And right after that, the Mothership gets abducted. No more minus 400, 400, but... All right, TLDR, the Mothership story. I used to hate Motherships, but... Ever since they made them cheaper, changed them a little bit. And obviously it's no longer 8 supply and it's just 6 supply. I actually do think that Motherships make sense. And if anything, I think it's one of the better things that Protoss has in the uh, very late game. In these not exactly split map scenarios. But. So don't think that I'm still a hater of the mothership. I think it makes sense for high level Protoss players to use it in this day and age. Huh? I also, uh, I mean that's not whiskey obviously. But I don't like tequila. But that's not because I had a uh, bad experience with it. I just never liked it. I'm so surprised that this is such a global party drink. Like, oh, let's have a shot. Let's have a shot. And I probably say it wrong. I know there's a different way of saying it in Dutch. Just never liked it. Nice abduct there by Rainer as he grabs another carrier. Rainer finding better trades right now, guys. That 10k resource difference has now turned into a 7k resource difference. And we have bought ourselves enough time to kind of max out. This is an important base. We have lost most of our spines and spores, right? 16 spines and 2 spores have gone down. I think the army is good enough to battle though. We don't have Infestus, maybe that's something that Rainer would love to have. Max Pax has a lot of minerals in the bank, but it's a bit deceiving, right? Because Zealot reinforcements are not going to win this game. And we are now very, very carrier heavy. And a lot of high level Protoss players will tell you that mass carriers is not really the way to go. I like carriers because they're easy to use and they're good. High Templars are exposed. Rainer's Ultras get all three of them. Maybe Rainer can just go back right now after killing those Ultras. No, he's going to drop a Parabomb. And he's actually just going to take the fight with the Corruptors. Why not? Only two Archons remain. Yeah, I think this is a perfect fight by Rainer. And this game has absolutely been turned on its head. Where it looked so good for Max Pax two, three minutes ago. But he didn't really know what kind of a position Rainer was in. He gave Raynor time to get the Dream Army out. More Vipers, more Corruptors, a couple of Ultras. Battery Overcharge is probably the moment to disengage. 
-hmm. Even though I think that was a victory for Rainer, it's, you can't stick around with Corruptors only, right? You're not going to kill all these cannons. And fighting near battery overcharge is so hard. Two Broodlords are not going to kill Stalkers anymore, so Rainer needs to go back. But Max Max lost a very, very expensive army, mostly a lot of gas. Look how close this is now. It used to be even, then it was 10k in favor of uh, Max Max for a bit, and now it is close to even as a time warp gets dropped. A couple of uh, Zealots are going to run into the right side base. I mean, this is basically the only way to get any value out of a massive mineral base and a bank that Max Max is sitting on. But I stand by what I said earlier. The Zealots alone will not win this game. And those 10 plus carriers that Max Pax just lost, or he lost 8 or 9 of them. Just, he never re-expanded. He just kind of thought that the 5 bases he had, that that was going to be good enough. Because there was a lot of creep. We're now going to go for the classic, a little bit of long distance mining. Look at these probes battle the links. That will work if it's 2 links. That's not going to work if it's like 16 links. Mm -hmm. it doesn't look professional. Well, mate, no one forces you to be here. <laughs> it is your choice to be here, right? You don't have to be here. I ran a lot of polls. I let the people choose whether or not they wanted a camera. And the people voted for yes. I let people vote for chat as well. Chat, yes or no. They vote for yes. You may not like it, mate, but it's kind of how democracy works, right? People vote. People speak. You can run a new prediction. And if people want me to turn the camera off, I'll turn it off. Not because I think it looks professional or professional. I think I don't need to be professional. I'm sitting here drinking whiskey, mate. I get paid exactly zero dollars to cast this tournament. So I don't need to pay be professional. I need to be having fun. And I need to do a good job for the people that like watching my stream. And if they want me to have a camera, I turn my camera on. Hmm. It's okay, this rail, mate. We're moving on. I moved past it a long time ago. A couple of Fungos are going to land. Max Pax's army is just nowhere near as good as it once upon a time was. And I like Reyna's army a lot. A couple of Fungos, a couple of Ultras. The Broodlords are really starting to do their thing. And since Max Pax never got a 6th base up, he cannot rebuild these units anymore. And that is going to do it. After a 26-minute banger, it is Basilisk Grainer who gets out of a lot of trouble. Because he absolutely was in a lot of trouble for a little while. And wins and advances into the grand finals of this edition of the european pro tour weekly where i assume the guy that everyone is talking about is waiting for him but you guys did not give me any updates on that tvt but yes it is clam who in the end took care of a spirit in the semi-finals a spirit defeated gabe in the quarters this is a fun rivalry by the way between these two like spirit wins gabe wins spirit wins gabe wins it's so back and forth and when it comes to clam it is mostly clam so once more, your grand finals of the European Pro Tour Weekly will be between Clem and Reiner. Reiner stops Max Pax, who won the last two weeklies that he played in. He won the European Weekly, he won the American Weekly. TVZ Grand Finals. That should get the people excited, right? You guys love TVZ. I love TVZ as well. Take a tiny break. After that, we'll be back. Clem, Reiner, best of five. Uh, Clem has won the last few, so do I want to make this a handicap prediction or not? Uh, Clem, Rainer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the last few times it was a 3 1, a 3 1, an 0 3, a 3 1, a 3 2, a 3 2. Hmm. So since back to back 3 1s, uh, I think we'll make that prediction. <laughs> exactly, Pink Pegasus. I think that's a great point, maybe. This game. Even if Raynor lost some of his creep, right? And the creep wasn't connected anymore. If there was no creep, it would have been so much easier for Max Pax to take a 6 base. And then he would have been able to replace some of those high uh, value Protoss units that he lost. Mostly the gases. But because there was always creep there, it was just a bit more awkward for him to split up some units. Get detection there, get an observer there. And actually clean up that creep and then expand. So... Yeah, that wasted APM, not so wasted. I think in the end, that decided the outcome of this game. 62% uh, of the people thought Reyna was going to win, and he did win. Even after partying his ass off in Dubai for a couple of days, Reyna gets the W. 63% of you guys believed, and he is right. Clem versus Reyna, Grand Finals, best of five, handicap.
Clem 3-0 or 3-1. Uh, Rainer to win two plus maps. That is going to be the prediction. Both of the nerds have traveled for a little bit. Clem went to LA. He was my bus buddy. Kind of forced it upon him, but I think he was okay with it. And Rainer was in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the stream, Roddy. Thank you, mate. Chicken hands in your hair. Thank you to the micro man as well for the 22 months and 20 months. Someone said something about a democracy vote for naked Roddy. Unfortunately, mate, that's against the TOS. Otherwise, I'd be naked all day for you guys. I'm your man after all. That's an inside joke, but... Yeah. 